Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the analysis of variance or ANOVA, one of the most important topics in hypothesis testing, which lays the necessary foundation for a very important topic in predictive modeling known as regression. So if you've already struggled to understand this topic, or you have a partial understanding, but you're not very confident about this, I can assure you if you watch this video till end, you will get complete clarity on analysis of variance. Let's get started. When to perform ANOVA? So ANOVA or analysis of variance is used to analyze the differences between the means of two or more groups. It allows us to determine whether there are statistically significant differences among the group means. Up to two groups, we could conveniently do a two sample t-test with independent samples. But the moment we go beyond two samples, we'll have to rely on something called as ANOVA, subject to certain assumptions. What are these assumptions? Number one, independence of observations. So within a group, if you have observations, they are supposed to be independent of each other. Plus the groups are also supposed to be independent of each other. Second is normality of the parent population. We'll have multiple samples that we'll be looking at. Each of the samples would be assumed to have come from a population that's normally distributed. Third is homogeneity of variances. This is about whether the variances of the samples are equal or not. And the fourth assumption, which is more of a practical requirement as seen when we perform these experiments, is that the sample sizes should be roughly equal and preferably greater than 50. Let's dive into a problem statement and understand what kind of problems are solved using ANOVA. And then I'll give you a complete visual explanation of the idea of variation and the cases covered under ANOVA. An entertainment platform is conducting a study to compare the average views within first 24 hours of release of three different genres, action, comedy, and horror. The platform wants to determine if there are any significant differences in the average views among these genres. Three separate samples have been collected, each representing the views of recently released content in their respective genres. The platform aims to analyze the data and draw conclusions regarding the viewership patterns of these genres. Perform appropriate tests with 5% level of significance. So does this problem statement qualify a scenario for ANOVA? Of course, yes, because we are talking about three different genres, and for each genre, we have certain observations, which are views, let's say, in thousands. Let's understand this with the help of data. So here is how our data looks like. And we have some observations. These are views in thousands. After a video for a particular genre has been released. Each column represents a specific genre. We seem to have the data for 20 videos from each genre. And these are the views captured in thousands. Before we even get on to solving this problem, let's understand why do we need ANOVA. In ANOVA, we claim to be comparing two or more means. Let's say in our case, we had three different genres or we have three different groups. So we can always go about doing pairwise comparisons of these groups. We can compare group one with group two, group two with group three, and group three with group one. All we'll have to do is that we'll have to perform three two-sample t-tests with independent samples. Of course, that may be seen as an additional effort that we are doing three tests, but this is something we already know. Why are we not doing this? The answer to this comes when we go a little deeper to understand that in order to conclude this test or complete the comparison of these three means, we will be performing each of these three two-sample t-tests and each two sample t-test comes with a 95% confidence. So when we put things together and try to get the overall result, we will have to put these three confidence levels together. When you combine three such tests, each with a confidence of 95%, the overall test would not be of 95% confidence. In fact, because each of these three tests are independent of each other, the overall confidence would significantly drop. It will be close to 86%. We discussed that confidence level is one minus alpha. So if the composite confidence level of this three comparison test is 86%, you can imagine alpha or level of significance in this case will be 14%. And we typically don't take alpha greater than 5%. This is the reason we need a test like ANOVA. Now let's understand the test statistic involved in ANOVA. But before we get there, let's understand the basic idea of ANOVA. So ANOVA tries to break the total variation into two components within group variation and between group variation. Now, if these terms are not familiar to you within group and between group, just hang on, you'll get complete clarity on these concepts. Like every test, it also has a test statistic. And the test statistic here is a ratio of mean sum of squares between 
divided by mean sum of squares within. Again, don't worry about the calculations right now, the terms, you'll get clarity in due course of time. This also involves the degrees of freedom. We've explained this concept in our previous videos. Degrees of freedom are separately counted for the numerator and denominator. But let's not make it math heavy right now. We want to understand this concept overall. What is this variation? What is the within group variation? What is the between group variation? Let's say this is our data. Let's say these represent the views. So a point here has higher views and point here has relatively lower views. We don't have any understanding of the genres right now. We don't know if a particular data point belongs to a given genre. But if we get that understanding, maybe we can see these points seem to be belonging to one particular genre. These points belong to another genre. And this is the third genre. So if we try to analyze these closely, we may get something like this. And if you see, you'd realize for each of the genres within the genre, they're pretty well contained. You can see they're kind of contained in this circle. Similarly, these points of whatever genre it is, they're contained in a particular circle. So is the case with the third genre. So within the groups, within each genre, the variation is limited. And how about the mean? Their means are definitely very, very different. So while we can say the variation of the genres within is pretty well contained, the variation between them is likely to be high. Why? Because their means are very, very different. In general, the idea of variation is to calculate the mean and then calculate the distance of every point from the mean. So if we were to calculate a mean for each of these genres, this will be somewhere here. And you can see that none of the genres are coinciding with the mean, which may be somewhere here in between. So we can say this is the case of less within group variation and high between group variation. Remember I said ANOVA breaks the variation into these two parts just covered one case of that. And if we were to imagine this through distributions, it might look like this. So these are three genres. And while their variation or the shape of the distribution is nearly comparable, their means are very, very different. But there is one more possibility. Let's say we are back to our views. What if the genres were like this? Now, if we look a little closer into this piece, you would realize that the genres are somewhat like this. In this case, even within the group variation is relatively high when compared to the previous scenario where the groups were pretty well contained. Now if we see the groups are displaying higher variation. What about the means? Interestingly, the means in this case seem to be a lot closer. So can we say that in this particular case, there is high within group variation, but low between group variation. Compared to the previous case, when the means were separated, but the groups were well contained. Now we have groups displaying high variation, but the means are a lot closer. And how would this look like on a distribution? It's something like this. So the groups are pretty close when it comes to their means. The distributions are nearly overlapping. And if you see the shapes of these bells, they seem to be a little spread apart from the means. So we can say high variation, but the groups are fairly comparable when it comes to their means. With this understanding, we'll now move back to our problem statement and try solving it. So let's understand what all information has been provided to us. We've been provided the level of significance, which is 5% or alpha is 5% of 0 0.05. That's one and the same thing. Let's understand how the null and alternate hypothesis statements are written for ANOVA. So the null hypothesis would be that the mean views of genre one is same as the mean views of genre two, which in turn is same as the mean views of genre three. They are one and the same. They are comparable. On the other hand, the alternate hypothesis in this case can be written in two different ways, which essentially leads to the same interpretation, but it's just about the language, the way we write it. First way would be to state that not all genres have the same mean views, which means at least there is some difference in one of the genres. That's exactly what the other way writes. So at least one of the genres has mean views different from the rest. Maybe all three are different, Maybe at least one is different from the rest. That's how we state the hypothesis. So let me take you to Excel and try to solve this problem there first. And then we'll solve this problem in Python as well. All right. So we are here with the raw data. And uh, we can go to the data tab in Excel. Once again, the appearance might be a little different depending on the version of Excel that you're using. But data analysis tool pack would always be available in the form of an add-in. If you don't see here by default, get it through Excel add-ins. Let's come to data analysis tab. And if we scroll up a little bit, you'll see there are a couple of cases of ANOVA covered here. We are dealing with just 
single factor. What do we mean by single factor? So we are trying to analyze the views with respect to John Ravi. And that's why there is just one factor. If there's one more factor involved, it becomes a two-way ANOVA. Let's hit OK. It asks us to select the entire input data. Let's choose that here. So I'm selecting just the data, not the serial number. And we can hit OK. And it is asking, do we have labels in the first row? Now it's asking us for alpha. We'll keep it at 5%. And it's now ready to display the output in a new worksheet. Let me hit OK. We have the output. Let me just zoom in a little bit here and let's try to understand this. So, like I said, you know, every test would involve a test statistic. In this case, it was the F statistic. The critical value for the distribution for 5% level of significance is 3.15. The computed test statistic, however, is 31.5 approximately. The p value is very small at 6.12 multiplied by. 10 to the power minus 10. If we want to interpret this visually, what does it mean? So we have a critical value around 3.15, and we have a test statistic at 31.5, which is way ahead into the rejection region. The entire area to the right of this critical value is the rejection region. And our test statistic is well within that region. The area occupied to the right of the test statistic is not even visible here. You can imagine it was a very, very small value of the order of 10 to the power minus 10. So in this case, we will reject the null hypothesis, which means not all the genres have the same mean views. At least one of the genres would be different from the rest. And if we compute the average and do the comparison, you would see the scenario in our case is like this. So not that all three are different. Genre one and genre two are more similar but genre three is clearly different from the rest. There are separate set of tests called post hoc tests, which can be done to do this, but ANOVA in itself only tells you whether it detects a difference or not. The answer in our case would be that yes, it detected a difference. Now let's go about solving the same problem in Python. So we are in Python and we'll have to call a couple of libraries. For example, we are going to read an Excel file for which we need the library called Pandas, and we are going to perform ANOVA analysis of variance this comes from a library called stat models and a couple of other modules in sequence would have this particular method we are looking for. So we are calling these, plus we are calling something known as OLS, which stands for ordinary least squares. Essentially, it's a regression technique. A few videos down the line, you'll realize how ANOVA and regression are relative. Let me just run it. We are reading a data frame. So this is not to be confused with degrees of freedom. This is DF, which is data frame in short. And we are reading an Excel file, which is views by genre. Let me show you the first 10 observations of the file. This is how the observations are. So we have each column representing a genre, except for the serial number, which is not a column that we're going to use in any calculation. So we can simply go ahead and drop it here by doing a DF drop, access one, which means it's a column, and in place is equal to true means that you change the reference where you read the data from. Otherwise, it would just be a temporary output that it displays. So we have dropped that column, and now we are going to align our data in a way that Python is comfortable working with it. For this, we are going to use a method called melt, which is available in Pandas. Just compare the output after we apply this method called melt to this data frame, and we come up with a new column called genre and a new column called views. How does it look like? Let's see the difference. So if you see, this has simply stacked the data. Now got a column called genre, which has all three genres present. I'm only displaying the first 10 records, but you can see it's genre one. If I would have displayed, let's say 20 records, it'll show you complete genre one. If I, let's say, display more records, it'll begin to show you genre two as well, because for each genre, we have 20 records. So we, we just stacked the data using this melt method. And this is how Python would be accepting the inputs. It would need a single column for genre, and a single column for views. So there's a bit of a syntax here, if you see. We have to define a formula. What are we trying to do here? We are trying to explain the views with respect to the genre. And then we have to apply this formula through the ordinary least squares method. So we are saying this stacked data frame that we got above is something which is to be supplied. And this formula is what we are going to look at, and we are doing a fit. Now we have to pass this model to our ANOVA linear model class that we called above, and this generates an output called ANOVA table. Now, if you see this ANOVA table has the same values as what we got in Excel. If you see the test statistic and p-value, 
31.5 test statistic and p-value of 6.12, 10 to the power minus 10. Now it doesn't display the critical values by default, but we've seen in our previous videos that we can find it through the function called PPF. And if I show you, this is 3.158, which is exactly what we had here in Excel. So once again, the conclusion remains the same. Our critical value is 3.15. Our test statistic is 31.5, well within the rejection region. And p-value is very small compared to 0.05. So we can definitely reject the null hypothesis. So once again, we conclude that at least one of the three genres is different from the others. In this case, it's the genre three, which is different from genre one and genre two. Notice it could be any one genre or maybe all the genres which are different. When I say any one genre, it could be genre one, which is different from genre two and three. And maybe genre two and three are similar in some cases. The point is at least one of them is different. All of them are different like this. With this, we explained the idea of performing analysis of variance. When do we apply analysis of variance? What are the assumptions? and a visual explanation along with the way we perform the test in Python and Excel. In our next video, we're going to explain the math behind the analysis of variance. We'll do all these calculations and you'll see the values that we compute manually will exactly tally with the values that we got through these tests or the built-in utilities or libraries. Thank you.